The music news for the streets, the music news for your beats, the news for the music stuff that you gonna need. We gon' talk about plugins, we gon' talk about gear. If it's news on this music, we gon' talk about it here. Let's go. Welcome to the music news for the streets. I'm your anchor man. Some, some, some. Hit the keys. Here today in my best orange Uncle Roger Polo. Fuyo! And in today's newscast, we've got all kinds of exciting stories from three freebies. I've got a whole bunch of plugins, some I may have missed over the past couple of weeks, and some that are brand new. But our top story today comes from Native Instruments. It looks like Native Instruments just dropped Choir Omnia Essentials. Let's go ahead and take a look here at that story. So as we see here, Choir Omnia Essentials is a streamlined symphonic choir. So basically, it's a slimmed down version of their full Choir Omnia. Um, it does cost $149, but this one is a lot less CPU intensive than the first version. I um, mean, it's an intuitive 40 piece choir with four independent soprano, alto, tenor, and bass sections. Um, you can quickly dial in detailed choir arrangements with a wide range of vowels and polyphonic true legato. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop into FL Studio and check this thing out. Um, so I made a little sample beat as always. In this video, I have a few different sample beats because you know on this channel, we actually like to make music. Uh, so we like to download the plugins and actually check them out instead of just reading the screen and form an opinion off of that. Um, so if you don't want to see demos and stuff like that, there's plenty of other channels out there that just read the screen. They do similar things that I do. You can find them. Uh, but with this one right here, um, you're going to basically hear the choir. Um, you know what I'm saying? As soon as it comes in right off the jump. All right, guys, that's the first little sample beat that I got for you guys today. Let's go ahead and hop back into Choir Omnia Essentials and check it out a little more. So when you open up Choir Omnia Essentials, it's going to look something like this, just depending on which preset you actually pick. Uh, so what's cool about this is you can actually pick the different sounds that they have. So I'm gonna go ahead and push down a button so you can hear it real quick. So there's a bunch of different presets in this. There's like 188 different presets. And you can go through it differently by the fill. Um, and then you can pick a preset by fourth, eighth, sixteenth, or meters, all that other stuff, and it helps you out. But you'll see here you get different um, sounds or vowels every time that you switch up. So with this, you can actually get a straight choir or you can get vowels. And it's pretty cool because when you're messing with this thing, you can come over here and you can edit. So if you push this pin right here, it'll start allowing you to edit the different vowels and stuff that you have. So like, let's say I want to change that ride to a nom, boom. Or if I want to change his first A to like an O, that's pretty solid. You can change the duration and everything too. So if I click on this, boom, I can make it long or short. So that's pretty solid. You got sustain, you got marcado, you got staccato. I don't know how to say that. I'm not even gonna hold y'all, um, but it's pretty cool. Uh, with this again, you can come over here into your library and then over here, you've got like altos, um, you've got basses, you've got sopranos, you've got tenors. So if you wanted to just get like the long notes, I could click on this right here, right? And now this is gonna just be a long note. So that's pretty cool. As you go to the presets, you can do different things. So you can get a regular choir or you can get something creative. And you see here in the middle, um, this dial will control the dynamics of that. So I'll go ahead and play just a few of the other um, sounds just so that you can hear them. So we already listened to altos. So you wanna make sure that you put this on sequencer if you want it to go through the sequence. So pretty solid, we'll go through another preset real quick. Uh, so we can come through here and there's a whole bunch of these. So it's all kinds of different sounds. I 
I think that this choir is solid for a whole lot of different genres. You can use it for almost anything. Let's go ahead and we'll go through a couple of basses real quick. So boom, we'll just come over here to Bass Essentials. And then the same thing with the basses, I can get all those same vowels and stuff over here. So this is a pretty solid library. You've got effects and stuff over here that you can mess with as well. So you've got reverb, you've got stereo, you've got EQ that you can mess with. Um, and then you have a few other controls here. It's where you can do round robins. So it doesn't sound the same every time it hits. It makes it sound more realistic. Um, you know, you can go from legato mode, from scripted to sample, and so on and so forth. So in my opinion, very solid little choir plugin. Um, one I'd recommend checking out if you have the dollars to grab it. And the second story that I have for you guys today is a freebie. Uh, this one is limited time only. I'm pretty sure you guys might have heard of it by now, but it is the UAD Century Strip. Uh, when you look here at the Century Tube channel strip, it is going to look like this. Um, this thing is pretty solid. I'm not even going to hold y'all. I already had it because I have a bunch of UAD plugins, um, but it's a pretty good preamp. You know, it's uh, you got EQ, you've got compression, you've got a preamp right here. So I have this on the drums right now. Uh, so I'm going to let you guys hear what it sounds like, what the drums sound like without it on there. Now, once I throw it on there, So you can hear how it's making the drums crunchy for me. You can also throw it on something like a bass. Um, you can throw it on anything. You can throw it on vocals, you can throw it on guitars, you can throw it on pianos. But I have this bass right here and the bass sounds like this. Now once I throw this uh, channel tube strip on there, it's gonna sound like. But that's because I pumped it up. So I can do whatever I want to with this. That's like it's running through the preamp. We can turn this up a little bit and it's gonna be super crunchy. So you can do a lot with this to distort your sound. It's got a nice clean EQ on it. It's got compression too. And you can also use this thing on a vocal as well. So let me go ahead and try it on this vocal real quick. So this is what the vocal sounded like without the Century Tube channel strip on there. Now once I throw it on there, it's gonna sound like this. So it really brings out that vocal and it's super clean. It's not super distorted or anything like that, but I can distort it if I want to. And then obviously I've got all this EQ on there and stuff like that, so. So you can hear how clean that EQ sounds. It doesn't sound like it's too distorted. It doesn't sound like it's too much on your ears. Definitely a freebie. I would recommend grabbing. This is probably the best free channel strip that you're ever going to get. Um, and then you could probably cross grade in the future in UAD too as well. But grab this. I'm going to leave everything linked below in the description as always. In the next story, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys already know about. But it does look like Cymatics has acquired producer grind. Hiya. No, I'm just playing, um, but I don't know if that's necessarily a good or a bad thing. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't really use Cymatic sample packs and all that other stuff. I have covered some of their free plugins because they are a good value to the community, but I know some people love them. Some people hate them. I don't have an opinion um, and I don't really follow producer grind. No hate, no shade. I know they do a lot for the producer community. I know they've made a ton of tutorials helping out a lot of people. 
Um, I know they've made a bunch of sounds. I know that they've done a ton of interviews. So this is no knock, no shot at anybody. Just give them my thoughts. I do want to say, though, that I think that it maybe it was a good idea for them because if you look here at their page, they really weren't putting out content. So before I think that they got acquired, they hadn't had any videos out in six months. So maybe they were on their last leg. Maybe they were done. Maybe this is going to give them some juice, some energy, some motivation uh, to keep pushing forward. And I'll never be mad at something like that. But I will say uh, to anybody else on this platform, if you are building a brand, typically you don't want to sell your brand and then work for the person who bought your brand. I'm not telling them it's not going to work for them uh, because maybe it will. But typically, you know, you want to sell it and then work on something else. You know, that's what typically what wealthy people do. They build something, they sell it, then they build something else and they sell it then they build something else and then they sell it. So uh, I'm not mad. I'm not hating. If they're happy, I'm happy. If they're mad, well, you know, it's not going to affect me. But just wanted to let you guys know because uh, I'm just reporting the news and it's a story. Recently, UVI just dropped a new plugin called HX Odie. Let's go ahead and take a look at the story. So as we see here, um, this plugin has 280 crafted presets. I believe it's an emulation of the ARP 2500 Odyssey or the ARP 2600 Odyssey. I could be wrong, but I believe that's it. Um, so HX OD is based on the world's first dual phonic analog synth, a capable and expressive three octave keyboard instrument with design heritage from the renowned 25 and 2600 modular synthesizers with heaps of configurations, potential oscillator cross modulation, and it's ARP 4023 SVF life filters. The OD explored a broad and unique sonic range, notable both for its ability to mimic natural instruments and an exceptionally rich analog ca uh, character. So this synth came out in 1972. So if you're into vintage synth, it's pretty dope. Let's go ahead and hop into FL Studio, check this thing out. So same as the last uh, plugin, I actually have a demo beat for this one too. This one's kind of a house beat. Obviously I'm not a house aficionado, so I don't know how dope the beat is, but none of these beats are all the way mixed down, but all the sounds besides the vocal chops, like all the melodics, the bass, all that stuff came from uh, HX OD. Let's go. All right, guys, so that's the second little demo beat that I put together for you guys today. Let's go ahead and hop back into FL Studio, check this thing out. So when you open up HX OD, it's going to look like this. You're gonna use this in UVI Workstation. Um, as you see here, it's got three different oscillators. So you've got this oscillator, you've got a sample oscillator, and then you've got a noise oscillator over here. Um, and then you can change the noise type. So you got pink, white, and then a different uh, type of pink and white down there. You've got your oscillator filter over here. You've got your sample filter right here. Um, you've got an ARP function. Um, it comes with a bunch of different effects. You know, you can control your amplitude, you know, your ADSR down here. You can control the pitch and stuff right here. You've got a bunch of different LFO controls over here. Um, you can hop underneath the hood. You've got a bunch of effects. So with the effects on this thing, as you see when you hop in here, I mean, there's just a ton of effects, you know, boom, look at all these different flangers, choruses, phasers, you know, cross phasers, you know, all this other stuff, filters. Um, you just got a bunch of stuff over here that you can mess with, which makes this pretty solid um, because, you know, you just get a ton of sounds. I believe the cost of this is $79. I could be wrong. I could be right. I'm not actually sure. Um, but as we look at this, I'll play a few of the sounds for you guys real quick. So this was the bass that I used in the beat. All right. So and then we'll just play a couple of basses just so that you can hear what they sound like. Um, the one thing about UVI though, it does take one moment to load up the programs. I'll play a couple more presets for you. I'm not gonna play a whole bunch of presets. I believe there's a preset tour out there. I just wanted to talk about it and kind of let you hear it and see what you can do with it though. So 
So I'll play a few keys and some stuff like that for you guys real quick. Cause again, I just want to play a few sounds for you guys. Um, so boom, we've got keys. We'll just pick something at random. I don't know what any of these sounds are off the top of my head. Play something else real quick. Next key. Play something else. So it's got some cool sounding stuff. Um, again, it's supposed to emulate two very classic synthesizers. So UVI does a very good job at modeling and all that other stuff. It's got, I mean, everything you can think of, it's got in here, you've got, you know, brass plugs, rhythmic effects, bells, you know what I'm saying? All that good stuff. So arpeggiations, all that good stuff. So check out some of these arps real quick. <laughs> Yo, that arp is flame. I'm about to use that in a beat. But it's a fire plugin. Another one I'd recommend checking out. Y'all already know I rock with UVI, one of my favorite companies. They make really, really good products. And the next story that I have for you guys today is another freebie, but it's only free for a limited time. It looks like IK Multimedia is offering Classic Clipper for a limited time. Let's take a look here at the story. Um, so as you see here, Mastering.com and IK Multimedia are doing a giveaway together. Uh, T-Rex Classic Clipper normally costs $49. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this is my favorite clipper of them all. Uh, the only reason that I'm not gonna demonstrate it today is because I don't have it on my MacBook. I use it on my PC. I mean, I just, I don't have it downloaded on, on, on uh, the MacBook. I normally don't make most of my beats on the MacBook. So just is what it is, but I made all this stuff today on the MacBook, so. Um, but it is solid, I've talked about it before. Um, it's in my top 10 or 20 uh, paid plugins um, that I did this year and last year, so I like it a lot. Um, it's only free until the 23rd of August. So all you got to do is hop in here and put your email in, uh, retype this code, and they'll send it out to you. It's very good because of the way that you can put your slope. That's what I like about this. And it just sounds good when you use this clipper. It's just a very solid clipper. And the next story I have for you guys today comes from Excite Audio. It looks like they have dropped a new plugin. The plugin is called Bloom Vocal Edit. Uh, when you open up Bloom Vocal Edit, it is going to look like this. This is another Vocal Chop plugin, but this one's dope because of the way that you can put your, your chops together and you can edit them up and it just sounds really nice. Um, I can show you better than I can explain to you. So I got a little sample beat as always. Um, this one's using Bloom Vocal Edit um, all throughout it. So you'll hear it as soon as it comes in. This is another house beat. Uh, so, you know, let's go. Right, guys so that's the third little sample beat that i put together for you guys today let's go ahead and hop back into fl studio and check out bloom vocal edit so when you open this up it's going to look like the other bloom plugins i've done full reviews on the other two so i'm not going to do a full review on this one i'm just going to kind of talk about it a little bit because all of the settings and everything is going to be the same so you know all the effects and everything like that's going to be similar um so you got glue you got compression here you've got a little bit of distortion um then you also have like a metallic and then you have a doubler right here um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute everything else on the track and I'm just going to play the Bloom vocal edit part. So let me go ahead and highlight this real quick and then I'll turn up some of the effects just so that you guys can kind of hear what they sound like. Um, so if I was to push play. Uh, 
So you are going to have a delay and a reverb with this thing. Uh, what's cool about this too as well is you have modifiers. So since you have modifiers, you can play the pattern as you want the pattern to play. So like if I was just to hold down one key, but there is a whole bunch of different sounds you can go through. So you got all these banks that you can go through. Yeah. Bass. Bass. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Uh. Hey. Uh. Oh. Uh. And you feel. So all these samples are different than the samples that are in Bloom Vocal Aether. I wish Excite Audio would listen to us though. And I keep saying, you have to make it so that we can drop our own samples in here as well. I think that this would be much more enticing to all of the potential consumers. If we can drop samples in here and we could chop up our samples with this, it would make this tool so much better. But again, with this, you get all kinds of different sounds. <laughs> But then you can come over here into the edit menu. And once you get into the edit menu, obviously you see all the different stuff that you can do. So you can chop up different sections of the sample that you're using. And what's cool is that each different sample um, can be edited. So as you look here, it's got all 14 of the samples here. And then you can edit each one of the samples separately. And then you can use whichever part that you want. So now down here, you have like what's a phrase player. And you can set up the phrases however you want to. So like you see if I was to push this A, it's playing all the stuff that I have down here, but I could easily change this. I could just put a different sample in here. And now if I was to push the A, and then you can make it as short as you want to. So I can shorten this up if I wanted to, or I could change the sample, obviously. Boom, so you see I just clicked on that and easily just like that, it puts in the next sample. And if I was to hit this modifier, You know what I'm saying? Just that simple. Um, so it's really easy to use. You've got delay, you've got bit crusher, you've got reverb, global effects, um, but you can actually um, draw in the effects how you want to as well. Um, so like, let's say I put this bit crusher on and we just rise this up like right here and we'll continue to rise this up now. So you hear how it's giving the bit crusher as it's coming up and stuff like that. Super solid. Um, you can also put a, a filter on there if you wanted to as well. It's like, let's say we wanted to filter just the beginning a little bit. So you hear how it's taking all the high end out here, right there. That's pretty solid. You got the controls and stuff down here um, in which you can control as well. Super solid plugin. Again, I have gone through this plugin in detail. Um, as far as all these effects and what all this can do. Uh, so I'm not going to do that again. I just kind of wanted to briefly uh, touch on this thing because it is pretty solid. It's something that I would definitely recommend if you like vocal chops. I need y'all Excite Audio though the next time y'all make this or if you have an update to let us drop our samples in here because that will take this thing to the next level. And up next, it looks like a few weeks ago, Native Instruments dropped a new addition to the Alicia Keys series called Alicia's Electric Keys. Let's go ahead and check this thing out. Uh, so when you open up Alicia's electric keys, it is going to look like this. When I initially got this a few weeks ago, I thought it was going to be like a straight like Rhodes electric piano or some kind of electric piano like that. Uh, it's still cool, though. Um, it's not what I was expecting, but it's still cool. Um, so I made another little sample beat. This one is just a little loop. So I'm just going to play the loop for this one. And then I'm going to go ahead and go through some of the sounds for you guys. Uh, so it sounds like this. So that's what it's gonna sound like in an actual beat. Let me go ahead and drop this window out real quick. Bam, we'll pull it back up. And then this is kind of what that piano sounds like. So it sounds all right though. It does sound cool. I'm not gonna say it's a bad instrument because it's absolutely not. Um, so here on the main screen, you'll see you'll get some macros down here on the bottom. And depending on which preset that you're using, you're going to get different macros. So as you see here, if I click here, you're going to get all kinds of different presets. Um, and it's all going to be on the same piano. Um, as you see here, you can tone, you got shape, 
and you got noise so you can mess with all this stuff and kind of dial in the sound that you want um, with your piano. Um, you'll see here you got two different mics so you can change the miking too as well. And then you get effects in which is dope that you already know you're gonna get all of the guitar rig and native instruments um, effects in here so you can get this thing to sound how you want. I'll go ahead and go through a few of the presets so you guys can kind of hear what it sounds like. I'm just gonna go through them at random though. That sounds pretty solid though. We'll go through some more just at random. And you see here, it's really easy to just throw in whatever you want, you know, just plus and then bam, you can get it whatever you want in there, you know? And then obviously with all of, you know, their plugins, you click on that and you can get into the control and stuff like that. So, um, I mean, I would recommend checking out maybe like Sanjay, I think he did like a full review on this or whoever's done a full review and has gone through all the presets and who's actually a keyboard player to see if this is something that you like. Uh, for me, it's okay. Um, you know, it's just okay for me, but it's not bad. So, um, those are my thoughts on that. <laughs> and the last story I have for you guys today is another freebie. Uh, this one is for Mac only though. Um, and this one is called Zverb. Uh, so when you open up Zverb, it is going to look like this. This is just basically an X, Y axis on a reverb. That's really simple to use. It's super lightweight. I'm just going to play these bells real quick. And then I'm just going to move this around so you can hear what it sounds like. So obviously as you have this uh, orange one or yellow orange um, down here at the bottom, it's gonna focus more on the lower frequencies uh, with the reverb. And then this is gonna be the amount of reverb and which reverb type it is. So not a bad tool. Um, if you know you need a quick reverb or if you just want something that's fun or something that's a little different to play with, I'd grab it. Definitely not an essential, but you know, if you just want another reverb and something a little bit different, you can grab this one. So that's what I got for you guys today in today's newscast. Hopefully I can help you guys out especially with those freebies, uh, definitely some fire plugins. That Choir Omnia is fire. That uh, OD by UVI, fire as well. Um, I mess with that Bloom vocal edit, all that stuff. So definitely some good ones. Go get that classic clipper if you ain't got it yet. So make sure if you guys do like this content though, you drop a whole elbow on that like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell. So every time we bring you guys a new video, you can be the first to see. Signing off is your anchor man. something, something, something. Hit the keys. Until next time, for you. <laughs>